Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Geek Pit. My name is Daniel, your host, and today I have the lovely and talented Kristen as my guest today. You had the opportunity to go see Double Driver and Black Satellite and Cradle of Filth. But before we really dive into that, I just want to say welcome to the pit. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) How are you doing today? I'm well. How are you? Not so bad. Thanks so much for asking. So Kirsten, what was it like going to the marquee and seeing a show like this? So the marquee is one of the bigger venues, not like the stadium size ones that we have here in Arizona. And I think that it's a really, really important part of our music scene here in Arizona, which is unfortunately it's going to be gone here soon. And I don't know. I just, I really love the type of people that go to marquee shows. And then it's, it's just right on the edge of the city by the college. So it's just a lot of fun, honestly. So this hasn't been your first time at the marquee. No, I, I've been going to the marquee for over 17 years. You've been there before the renovations and then the renovations. So with the added balcony. Yeah. What do you, what are you preferring your honest opinion? Because I have an opinion about it, but I want to hear yours first. Do not care for the balcony. Not at all. So, okay. Do I like the grungy small space? Yeah. It's kind of a novelty in its own. But the balcony, I feel like getting up and down on the balcony as far as orchestrating, like getting the wristband to go up there and, and getting up and down, you know, during sets and just having enough seating space because people do the balcony because they don't want to be in the pit. They want to sit down and just watch the show. And I feel like it's very cramped. And the whole point of going up the balcony is so you're not cramped. But other than that, I mean, I, the the lobby looks great. It looks beautiful. The bar is yeah. great because I, I remember the bar not being so fancy. Um, mm-hmm. And then it, I don't know if you guys have a, a bathroom lady attendant that's does all sorts of nonsense <laughs> in their bathroom, but it's fun. It, it's I like it a lot. I just I, the balcony itself isn't something that I, I I'm a huge fan of, but it's an option for people who want to sit down. So. The men's restroom does have a bathroom attendant as well. So that I don't know. I almost went in there the other day. <laughs> It's like when no. the women's bathroom is too full, you just go to the men's bathroom. But that's only a role that applies. <laughs> yeah. Right. Can't make that happen, really. Um, and yeah, uh, in regards to the bar, I remember the bar didn't have a well system when I first started going there. Now they have a draft system. So that's pretty cool. And it seems like it's wider and a lot more open. It was literally but, coolers with beer and bottles, yeah, at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And a couple of like vodka things here and there that like just mix in and have your mixers. Yeah, I do agree with you though that adding the balcony, it's just uh since they have the support beams now, it's just taken away from the space that originally was since it was just a big it wasn't really big, it was more like elevated down that you can get really close up to the front of the stage. Now I just feel that the steel beams are really taken away from that space and makes it feel a bit more cramped than what it was before. And I prefer the openness to it. Right. And then here's the thing with balconies is um, they sell tickets for balconies as something VIP or more elevated, right? But are you really that much closer to the performers when you're up there in the back? You're really not. I mean... You know, like I said, it's it's more of like a crowd avoidance tactic versus like actually giving you a better experience. So, yeah, and it does. It takes away from the space. Right. And then with the balcony, not every show sells balcony tickets. It's a handful. Yeah. So it's just, in my opinion, useless space if you're not going to really use it for every show that you're going to. But I did catch up on this. So you're saying that, unfortunately, the marquee is going to be gone. Can you give us a little bit more insight about that or what you know? So last time I heard, which was on the news uh, online and everything, is that ASU bought the marquee. And so they are going to be building more high dollar luxury condos next to that marina instead of using the space for more performances. So as far as I know, and that, and that deal may change as time goes by when it comes down to it. But right now that's the news. So it, it kind of does suck because the marquee's, like I said, one of the fewer ones, I, I obviously frequent the Nile as well. And the Nile is similar in size, but I actually really like the marquee because it's well air conditioned. So <laughs> that's yeah. true. That is a plus. That's a big deal, you know? Um, and 
because it gets so hot here and the best time of the year to go to shows is during the summer because we all have time to go hang out with our friends people coming to town you know so <laughs> it's kind of sucks leaving but that's all right and also just want to say jackie and i can't thank you enough for working the show so last minute and getting those awesome photos so thank you for that and exactly how long have you been doing photography for and what got you started on photography you know, people always ask me that question and I never, it never gets old. So I've been doing photography, um, accumulatively for 15 years, but professionally for two. And basically it was Warp Tour 2007. I, I'd saved up all my money. You know, everybody wanted to go to Warp Tour as a teenager. You want to go to your first concert, right? This was my first show ever. And I took one of those crappy disposables, like every MySpace kid had. <laughs> and I took really cool shots. And as a teenager, I read like, alternative press and like all these other you know music magazines because that was just where you got your demo cds and and dvds for bands and stuff for all these record labels that you, the internet was slowly just starting you know and i just took really great shots that i could tell would be magazine quality at some point but i was like 15 or 14 16 years old i don't know around that time range so i was like wow this is really cool and i'm a daughter of a musician as well as a musician and so my dad was pursuing his music and what I did was just help him with like promo shoots and stuff like that and kind of just get comfortable and practice when I was younger. And then eventually as I got more involved in that, I was going on, you know, tours and shows and taking pictures of other bands that he was working with at the time when I was a teenager. And then took a little break in between every couple of years because I ended up, you know, having kids and stuff like that. But in the last, you know, like I said, two years, I've really committed a lot of time in studying to kind of like better that. And then also I had only really been used to shooting like outdoor stuff. Indoor low light photography is probably some of the hardest photography ever. Yeah. I was just like, I'm going to go all the way. You know, I've told you I, that's the kind of person I am. And it's the best decision I've ever made. I think I've told you before I turned 30 and I decided I'm going to do everything I absolutely wanted to do. And regardless of being a music photographer and it being a highly saturated market, the cool thing about that is that everybody's style is so different. And I, you know, I see what trends are in photography and stuff, but it's so rewarding to make such artistic pictures, you know, create something super, you know, unique to me. And so, yeah, I, it's just something that I've always loved and, and music's my life, you know, um, yeah. like I said, I'm a musician and a photographer, but all my friends are bands and you know it's just it's just been a part of my life forever and i yeah i love it i do and it's it's just i don't know you just decided one day <laughs> yes, you know uh you have a real eye for for this and you take great shots and then last thing before uh, we actually jump into the content of this podcast when it comes to low lighting photography uh, you know what are some of the biggest challenges you do face oh my gosh so I think every photographer you ever ask is going to tell you red light is horrible. So if you know anything about color theory, that's the easiest thing to think about when you're doing photography is not just the lighting and, and you know, focal length of things, but lighting colors because concerts use lots of different colors and things like that. And it changes back and forth. And red light is extremely hard to get any detail out of. And then once you shoot the photo and you get back to the processing part of it, super grainy, there's just no way to really fix those. I mean, sometimes there is, but you get better at it as you go. But sometimes there's just no saving a picture. And I think that's the biggest challenge. And then just not having any proper lighting in certain venues. So smaller like dive bars and stuff like that. Certain parts of the band have lighting and then some don't. And it just really messes things up a little bit and uh yeah and then i guess as a music photographer overall regardless of low light mm -hmm. getting the right shots catching the action shots doing your research on their set list if you don't know the band and if you do know the band mm -hmm. talk to the band ask them what are, when are they doing those things you know they're, right. they're both catching it at the right time and just having to chase them you know i have yeah. actually developed a different approach to that it's more or less like instead of chasing the subject i wait for it to come kind of like hunting almost and it's helped me quite a bit <laughs> then every band has their different gimmicks and some of them love to ham it up for the camera some people don't do anything at all and i, I, <laughs> I said this to cat the other day i said people who perform are great pictures people who mm -hmm. look unique are good pictures you know mm -hmm. um and that's the thing is 
not everybody has their stage presence as something very, you know, big. They they play music. They're not performers. Right. I've experienced both. So. So speaking of Kat, she is one of our fantastic co-content creators. Also had the opportunity to interview Larissa Vale of Black Satellite. So she is also one of our journalists. Kat is, I mean. So what are your thoughts? What did you think of the Black Satellite performance? Oh, Black Satellite was great. So you're going to get a lot from me on this one because obviously it is Go for it. Women's History Month and I'm a female musician. So I have a lot of respect for other women who play music in the music industry. It's a boys club. It doesn't have to be. We belong. And also that day was Women's National Women's Day. So it was kind of cool to me. And um, she was great. She, she just had a great performance. It was she had a great stage presence. Everybody was just really it was well organized. Like everybody just kind of like harmonious as far as the stage performance went together Everyone, no one was tripping over each other. And everyone kind of just seemed like it went natural. And she's a great singer. All of her, her bandmates are great musicians. And the things that I heard about, you know, how they came to the music that they made was really cool. And I respect that quite a bit. She, she also just, she did some really cool makeup and she just, she maintains a really cool image too. So it was fun. Yeah, I'm definitely a fan. And Larissa is a sweetheart, a huge sweetheart. The whole band are. She sounded like a sweetheart from uh, the interview that Kat did. So that's that's awesome. That's great to hear. Seemed really humble too. I know you posted about two or three pictures and the makeup, her whole getup for, you know, the show was Like I said, how great. can you look bad looking like that? There was just no, I couldn't take a bad picture of her. There are yeah. people like that. that I, I love working with people like that. That nothing, every picture I can, it's they're so easy to work with. She was great. And um, I can't wait to show the rest of them too, but no, it, she just looked fantastic. It was cool. <laughs> and um, no, yeah, it was very Viking and, and it's just, it was kind of cool because <laughs> I love the, 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 the biker leather. Cause some people are worried when they do their stage outfits that they look corny or, you know, overdone, but it just, it works so well. It works so well. She's cool. Yeah, the music so great. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, she said it's just her and I believe uh, his name is Kyle. So it's just the two of them, but when they tour, they bring on, you know, an entire band. So how was the rest of the group that was with them on the stage? Um, the rest of them were great. I feel like, you know, it's not unusual for bands to hire people to go on tour with them, even if it's not, you know, the main band members either. But everybody, like I said, the whole band, including everybody that they added on, it just seemed like everybody knew what to do. And it was timed really well. And I, I have videos of them all orchestrating where they're like kind of cascaded towards the front and mm -hmm. you know it, it's such it's it was great no everybody and then and again they were really super cool too you know yeah. um, just it was just they were super humble people and, and and like i said everybody played really well i didn't see any mishaps you know i i obviously have an eye for it and i just <laughs> it, it turned out well you know um and i think they really loved working that venue too Overall, how was the uh, straight uh, stage production for their set? Oh, I'm going to say this overall for the entire show, not just theirs. Whoever did the lighting for that show, I mean, like, <laughs> there's not a bad picture. I took 600. Jesus. There's not a bad picture, but none. Of, I mean, aside of from them alone? Orders, no, they're, they're perfectly lit pictures. I, I almost oh, did sure. nothing to them to look like, like the one I posted of uh, Larissa. I didn't do anything to that picture. Damn. I didn't do the lighting. There was no, no it, I, I was able to just post it straight. And um, I'm just so happy. <laughs> um, no, and like I said, sound was good. Sometimes that can be an issue where, you know, you're not getting enough volume from the singer or, you know, vice mm -hmm. versa. And yeah, it was great. And I, I and again, it was, it was just her mostly singing. So it was, and, and I can understand what she was saying. And, you know, it, it was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the interview that uh, Kat did, they talk about, you know, who they like, their influences, uh, brought up some of the covers they did, I believe, typo negative covers, and they've also done uh, Rammstein. Yeah. So how was that overall? Rammstein was cool because everyone expects everybody to cover Du Hast, mm -hmm. and I'm German. <laughs> so uh, Rammstein, every, Germans have a very mixed opinion on Rammstein. But it was cool to hear somebody play something else. And so 
she did a really great job of that. That was actually my favorite performance of the night, just because one, it, it's familiar. It's a crowd pleaser because it's something familiar. And two, she just, she enjoyed doing that cover. You could tell. I can't wait to share that with you guys too. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they said that when they tend to do co covers, they kind of deconstruct the song itself and then make it their own so did it's you get cool that, because that flavor? people just karaoke it but i really like that when they kind of redo it yeah nice but they didn't do any of the um uh peter seal stuff oh my god i can't think of his name i said earlier Crap. <laughs> are you talking about typo negative yeah typo yes they didn't do any of that this no. four no yeah. and i think and i think uh as a musician i'll tell you that it's just kind of you kind of feel out where you're going and kind of like the mm -hmm. crowd it's a demographic thing like anything else i suppose Arizona has big typo fans. But... We do. We we have a goth <laughs> culture here. I'm part of it. And I just like, I was like, okay, but you know, also you have to understand that they only have a certain time slot. And mm -hmm. even though I, you know, I couldn't recall if they were on time or not because we were going in and out between sets as far as the bands go. So mm -hmm. usually, you know, you've got doors, they, the first band starts. Oni was great too, by the way. And, um, you wait till they get set up again in between sets. You know, sometimes it cuts short. Sometimes it takes longer to get ready than it should. Right. Um, I just don't recall if that was a case at this point in time. And really the technicality of it, I appreciate the art and the work that goes into it, but it's okay if it didn't start on time, you know? <laughs> but once things take longer to start, that means you've got less time to play, you know? Mm. Yeah, you got a time limit because the venue closes this time, you know? And so... And Devil Drivers and Cradle Phil's sets were very long. So, yeah. So I think that has a lot to do with it, too. And also, touring musicians will move around their set list. So the set list won't always be the same at every single show on their tour. They want to mix it up. You know, they want the, they don't want to go, oh, yeah, they played that one. They played that one in every social media post back to back from every state. This is the same things. You want a mixture of stuff. It, it really shows their diversity in their taste, too, and, and their influences. So. So the other thing I do want to go ahead and ask, uh, do you think that since the majority of the bands were traveling with the LED screens that you typically see at uh, bigger production shows or at EDM shows, you think that helped out with the lighting and get better pictures overall? So there is the light behind you and there's a light in front of you. Um, the light behind you is really cool because it adds to the mood. So it makes things look more grand. And then also branding, of course, you know, having the band's information on the back. So that's really important because if somebody doesn't know who that was, they go, oh, that's a really cool picture. Who's that? And they see it in the back. The LED screens don't necessarily add to right here, you know, the details of the musician. It just adds that mood in the background. You know, it's adding a lot of brightness and color, which is really cool. Um, no, just straight up, straight ahead stage lights or what get the picture, you know, because I can have, I have portraits of all of the band and it's just the lighting and it's black and it's so, so cool. And I love those because they're very, very much just very um, simple portraits versus like seeing all the stage lights and all the mm -hmm. equipment. Yeah. And with the marquee being a smaller type venue, not as intimate as some of the others here, how crazy did the pit get? Oh, well, the pit wasn't terribly crazy for Black Satellite, but I think just for the type of music it was, there wasn't like, there's not like super blast beats like metal usually is. It's still metal. It's just not the kind of metal that, you know, instigates like a, a pit like that. Yeah. Moving after their set. Yes. The pit just got absolutely out of control. Everybody's jumping up. Everyone's dancing. That's what I'm saying. Like it was, there was energy in the crowd. It just wasn't a mosh pit per se. <laughs> okay. Hey, as long as it wasn't violent and, you know, people were losing their shit. So, well, <laughs> as long as they were having shows, fun. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like violent pits are quality, but that's because I get into the pit myself. So. <laughs> I've got a black eye and a broken nose in a pit, so never. Again. I, I hurt myself <laughs> last night in the pit. <laughs> yeah. I had an Escape the Fate show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how was that, by the way? I listened to Escape the Fate since I was a teenager, and I love Craig Mabbitt. He's a good dude. He's from here in Gilbert, and it kicked ass. It kicked so much ass. So, um, nice. again, I get to I, I go to shows every week, and and I would love to see them at a bigger venue. But Crescent's cool. So, <laughs> so how was Devil Driver? 
Oh my gosh. Devil Driver. Okay. Devil Driver is insane. I mean, you can tell that they've been doing it for as long as I have. It and their sound, obviously, they've got somebody paid very well to make sure it sounds <laughs> perfect. I actually got to talk to Des Favara for a little bit before the show. And um, because like I said, me and Kat kind of like took turns going in and out because, you know, I can't stay off my bait. And um, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, Des Favara is really cool. Um, I know I've, I've met Max Cavalera before and he's cool with Max Cavalera, you know, Cavalera conspiracy. So I'll play all these bands, Cold Chamber, all that stuff. So um, they did great. I mean, I, and then again, like I said, the crowd for Devil Driver, I'm telling you the entire venue came for Devil Driver for sure. So, <laughs> They're like, yeah, eh, not really yeah. here for Cradle of Filth, but here for <laughs> Devil Driver. Nobody was there for Cradle of Filth. I'm not, I'm oh. not going to divulge it. I'm interviewing about this band. I'm going to leave it at that. That's all. I'm not going to say anything I kind <laughs> Um But yeah, so it was great. Oh, and then he interacts so much with the crowd. And as a photographer, I get to be right in front of everybody else, you know, in front of the barricade instead of behind it. And he interacted so well just to get those pictures too. And it was really cool because it it feels good to get like a really cool, very personal picture as well. Double Driver's been in it for about 20 plus years. So they know what they're doing. They are well seasoned and it shows. And it was an absolute blast. And then after the fact, we had connected after the show when I posted the photo of Alex Lee, which is their bassist. Mm-hmm. Alex Lee is a great bassist. Um, he actually, after I had posted their work, you know, Devil Driver online, mm-hmm. they got in touch with me after both Alex and Des both did. They blew me up, man. They were, they really were like super stoked about it. And I said, you know, next time you come out, let's do an interview, you know? Oh, yeah, um, that's awesome. So, right. Um, and so that's something that hopefully when they come back out, we can do. Alex, uh, again, he plays Ibanez. It's something that I play. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like everybody has like, you know, we talk about like, what do you game? PC Master Race, what console? You know, <laughs> things like, well, in guitars, you know, what do you play? <laughs> Ibanez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, but it was cool. So that's something in the future, hopefully, we can work on. So Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, happy for you. That, that'll be a badass interview. Also, you had the chance to see Oni. Yes. Oni is really cool. I didn't know what to expect. I, um, you know, with openers, you don't sometimes you, you, you know, a lot of time to try to research it, but you know, we came there to, to make sure we, we showed up for Black Sadly. So, um, Oni was, it was great. Honestly, everybody, but Cradle of Filth was great. <laughs> um, so it was cool. I like their stage presence too. Like I said, they were really great. Their lighting wasn't as good, but smaller bands tend to have a little less of uh, a experienced light text to do that, or their sound guy does it, or it really just depends. Or even the venue sometimes does it for them. And uh, yeah, so I got some good pictures, and I got I got better videos than I did pictures, of course. So less production value also ties into that as well. Yeah, the 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 smaller the band, the less following they have, the the less money they're going to have, which you know exposure helps to kind of like because they're a great band like i've listened to their music on spotify and stuff they're great it's just that being able to provide a quality performance outside of just performing themselves and making sure everything sounds and looks good uh, it does a lot you know that's why exposure is so important for bands so out of all four bands on the bill who do you say if you had to rank them like overall top best performance and also let's say production value I would say number one, best devil driver. Number two, black satellite. Number three, Oni. And then number four, <laughs> Cradle of Health. As far as like overall, when you with that whole scale. And how did this show compare to other shows that you've worked or uh, other shows that you personally attended? Uh, well, you know, because I have so many. <laughs> <laughs> I go to so many. Like I said, um, the marquee did a really good job at this this specific show. I would say... It's not in my top 10 as overall through the whole show, not just, you know, um, I would say, like I said, I'm a new fan of Black Satellite. That's for sure. I'm happy to follow them. And I also did a little bit of research as well because Nina Strauss is what is or was rather is again, Alice Cooper's guitar player. She's kick ass. Okay. Yeah, she is. So I found out that Larissa's worked with her. 
Um, there's photos online. You can go look on, I think it's Larissa's Instagram or it's either on Black Satellite's Instagram. Uh, Nita's great. And uh, Nita actually went from Alice Cooper to working with Demi Lovato for Demi Lovato's tour. And now it's going right. to Alice Cooper as of, I think, a couple days ago. And uh, I thought that was so cool. Again, just women in metal, women in music. I, it it impressed me. It, it, I, I live for it. So I thought that was cool. And um, But yeah, aside from shows, like overall, I would say it's yeah. not necessarily my top 10, but... Gotcha. And with the whole women belong metal, I mean, I'm a big, pretty reckless fan, not gonna lie. And a lot of I songs about <laughs> <laughs> innings was cool. Uh pretty reckless was at the innings festival in yeah. Tempe. And and although it be so hot, it was so hot and uncomfortable and wet because <laughs> it kept raining off and on. And it was yeah. But it was cool. It was really cool to finally see them too. And if you haven't had a chance uh, to listen to Kat's interview, you can actually find it on our website, which we'll plug here later, where she actually talks about uh, meeting Alice Cooper and uh, Nita. So that was actually a pretty cool story on the awesome. interview. Any uh, final thoughts uh, or anything you want to say about the show overall? If you're going to go see a band that, you know, or go see like a big headliner, stay for the, the opener. Go to the openers because some people don't even show up until the headliner but i've gone to so many shows where i didn't know who the band was i remember we were at max sabbath i knew who it was <laughs> but i was like haha you know ronald mcdonald and they were amazing and i i felt like such a butthole about it you know what I, mean? I was like <laughs> man i should have just you know because obviously I worked the whole show but right go to the whole show because you're going to be surprised some openers sometimes i've been to shows where the openers were the only good bands yeah. you know and the headliner was just whatever, you know, and Mediocre at best. Yeah. So go see the whole show. If you're going to pay for the ticket, go see the whole show. Not only that, a lot of the openers sometimes are local bands. So support local. They really yes, do need support it. local. That's my biggest thing too. I do. I shoot all these famous people, but like my favorite people to shoot is the people in my community. We have to support each other in order to get big, you know? Yes. So yeah. I mean, didn't you uh, just recently get a local shout out uh, from someone that you, you shot and then yes. like the little printout? So Carlos is from Rocket Steadman and um, he's a wonderful musician and um, they are a smaller local band and they're a great ska band. They're awesome. Um, and Carlos actually had someone at, while he was at work asked to sign a photo that I had shot of him. And, it, and I just like I was I felt so special, but I was like, I get to be a part of that experience. Because I know that everybody at every stage of their, you know, becoming a musician, whether no matter what the reason they do it, it feels good. It's like a little win. It's a milestone. And right. so cool that I got to be part of that. So um, Carlos is great. Check out Rocket Steadman if you like ska. They're, they're, they're amazing. And they're all just really talented musicians. They don't need all this um, computer equipment to make good music. They all play instruments. It's it's awesome. Hell yeah. Love to hear it. And ska still lives. Yes, especially in Arizona. <laughs> Come on. We love our reggae rock and our ska here. Yeah, we do. And lastly, just to wrap things up, where can we find uh where can we find you online? Uh, what are your handles for for your photo uh, photography? Okay. So I hate Facebook for my business because it, it's very neglected, so I won't give that to you. But um my company is Dark Stars Media, and you can find me at Dark Stars Media PHX, so Phoenix on Instagram and also darkstarsmedia.com. Uh, with that being said, you can find me uh, on uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, which I don't use really, and uh, TikTok at Super Call Me Danny. So that's that. And then you can find this podcast and other podcasts like it and other geek news and interviews on geek-network.com or gneaz.com. All of our socials are at geeksaz. And then the following podcasts we have coming your way are The Geek Pit, which is this one, Fandom Sessions, Geek Network Unplugged, and Church of Horror. Just want to say thank you so much for joining us tonight, uh, today, this afternoon, uh, this morning, wherever everyone is listening. But thank you for jumping into the pit with us.